Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. Uh, before we begin, if you can all please confirm that you're able to hear me clearly, you can type in yes in the chat window and I'll be able to see your responses. Great. We can see the responses coming in. I hope you are having a great week. Uh, please feel free to introduce yourself, your uh, location, your company, your name. Uh, it's great to see an international audience of people from all the industries and backgrounds. Great. I welcome you all to today's webinar on the application of range time data analysis in determining maintenance department performance. My name is Saeeda Samia Aves, and I am the lead software engineer at Velocity. For the next two hours, it will be our pleasure to host this webinar for you. So some of you might know that this is our 62nd webinar in a series of technical webinars. As a practice, we are conducting one webinar every other Sunday. You can follow us on LinkedIn, or you can check out our website to stay tuned to the latest updates. Furthermore, the recordings of these webinars are also up uploaded on our YouTube channel, which is Velocity. So you can subscribe to our channel in order to receive the latest updates. So today we have quite an experienced panel of speakers. I'm here with my colleagues, Mr. Jazul Karim Rao, who's the Managing Director, Principal Integrity and Safety Consultant, Ms. Mobina Khatun, who is the Director of Engineering Services, Mr. Vajahat Malik, he's the lead RCM engineer, and myself. During this webinar, we encourage you all to keep asking in questions in order to clear any kind of doubts. Uh, this will not only help you, but also the other people who might have the same uh, kind of doubts uh, during this webinar. Uh, to ask your questions, you can type in your queries in the Q&A window. You already have a provision in the Q&A window so that we can answer it directly uh, using that uh, window. Otherwise, uh, we'll answer it uh, live during the sessions. Furthermore, by the end of this uh, webinar, we'll be having a detailed Q&A session where we'll be answering all your queries and concerns. Kindly accept our apologies if uh, we do not answer your query or if uh, we miss out your query because of the high volume of the queries that we usually receive, we have to be selective. Furthermore, uh, we encourage you to keep your engagements going uh, during this whole webinar and keep engaging uh, with this topic. We'll be issuing a participation certificate to all those who have attended at least 80% of the webinar and have participated in the discussions through Q&A. Although uh, it's a Sunday today, most of you might be at the comfort of your homes. Uh, we should be aware of all the emergency exits which are around us in case of any kind of emergency that might erupt with time. For, uh, with the COVID situation around, we should be careful about our health and we should also take care of ourselves and of the people around us. So today's agenda, it covers the introduction about our company, Velocity. Then we'll be going through the range time for the plant maintenance, the range time introduction, our approach, uh, we'll, uh, the project's pre preceding summary and the results and outcomes. Then we'll be going towards the assumptions, the conclusions and the benchmark references. And at the end of this session, we will be having a Q&A session. We'll be touching the key, key theoretical and practical aspects of the subject matter in this time of two hours. We request you all to kindly follow along with us and keep asking questions to help us in engaging, make, it, make this engaging as much as possible. Uh, this uh, webinar will also be including a case study and uh, due to the uh, you know, uh, privacy concerns, we have detected the name of the client. I'll start by giving a brief introduction about Velocity. Velocity is a leading global consulting firm that provides asset integrity management, HSC and environmental services, and engineering services and software services to a number of clients in the oil and gas, energy, power, and petrochemical industries around the world. We also have our in-house proprietary software, Whale Plant, which is an industry-leading SAP certified completely asset integrity software solution, which is currently being used by oil and gas giants, such as Adnoc, Dragon Oil, Tanab, and more. Founded in 1982, we have expanded our footprint to more than 38 countries worldwide, offering a full range of specialized consulting services tailored to the energy industry needs. Here is a map which shows our worldwide existence. By combining global coverage and local knowledge with a wide range of services, we can create tailored solutions to the complex problems. Our range of interrelated services and integrated approach ensures that we can accommodate a wide range of projects. 
We provide the services covering a broad range of industries, including oil refineries, GOSPs, gas and NGL plants, chemical plants, fertilizer plants, pipelines, offshore platforms, wellheads, structures, and infrastructures. To go into more detail about our services, we provide asset integrity management services comprising of risk based inspection, pipeline integrity management for both onshore and offshore, structural integrity management, pressurized equipment management, inspection scheduling management, wellhead integrity management, asset performance management, computerized maintenance management, safety integrity level, reliability centered maintenance, reliability availability maintainability, condition based monitoring, condition assessment studies asset life extension studies, corrosion management plan, corrosion risk assessment study, DCVG, and SWIFT surveys, technical trainings. We also provide health, safety, and environmental services comprising of HSCIA studies, process safety and risk studies, environmental studies, and occupational health risk assessment. We also provide engineering services comprising of conceptual design feed, detailed design and engineering consultancy services, operating manuals and procedures, design verification and appraisal, fitness for service, and as well drafting services. We provide a wide variety of in-house developed software solutions comprising of Whale Plan, which is an asset integrity management system, Whale PHA, which is a software used for process hazard analysis, PSRA, which is for patrol station risk assessment, Whale MTS, which is used for material tracking, Whale ERP, which is an enterprise resource planning software suit, comprising of various modules like accounting management system, human resource management system, payroll procurements, and more. Whale CTR, which is used for cost time and resource management. Whale Flow, which is for approval workflow management. Whale ORP, which is an online reporting portal. And Whale Feedback. We also provide audits and assessment and ISO consultancy and training services. We also have our uh, training institute established here in Abu Dhabi, where we provide various trainings and certifications from certified technical training program to food safety training. Our training categories will let you quickly select your chosen course and ensure that you remain at the forefront of developments throughout the various industries. Velocity has successfully executed 600 plus projects with 300 plus clients, including Adnoc. Dragon Oil, Saudi Aramco, Luke Oil, Kafco, Petronas, Tanup, Banduk, Rouge, Sona Track, PPL, SNGPL, Dolphin Energy, KPOC, OSIP, QP, KOC, Orpic, Repsol, BP, and many more. Here are some of our certifications. These are accreditations and approvals. And these are our memberships. So now I'll hand it over to Mr. Ijazul Kareem Rao, who will be proceeding with the today's topic. Assalamu alaikum and uh, good day, everyone. Uh, to the different time zones in different parts of the world. Uh, the topic of the webinar is range time for a plant maintenance department or any facility maintenance department or focus would be. It is a very interesting topic and uh, detail uh, background and detail actual case study will be presented by my colleague, Mr. Mujahat Malik, and who was basically the project manager of that project that we executed a few years ago. And there are many messages for the management of maintenance department. And uh, so by definition, uh, like uh, when we say ranch time, what does this mean for a common person or a young engineer uh, or the people who are not relevant to maintenance department? It's because the attendees might be from the maintenance department or they may not be from the maintenance department. So the, this kind of concept can be applied on any kind of work, what is being done, even in engineering office, maybe in the software house uh, where the development work is being done or inspection activities, but in the maintenance department, it becomes more relevant because whenever there is a maintenance activity to be executed in a refinery or in a petrochemical plant or a fertilizer plant or a pharmaceutical plant. So you have to see, the management need to see and understand how much time is practically being spent on the repair work or maintenance work. It happens 
like in the like uh, or in gas sector, some time is spent or waiting for the work order or work permit because it requires cold work permit or hot work permit whether work permit has been issued by the operation and HSC department, then you would be requiring spares which should be available to execute the job, whether that uh, those spares or spare parts are available. Then there might be some access requirement like a building scaffolding or access, whether that scaffolding, uh, those facilities would be provided. And then the maintenance crew would be able to do the maintenance. And at that time, maybe there could be a lunch time or rest time, and the people go back without doing any work. So then they start working, and uh, then the off time, and then they would start the work next day. So, by definition, what is the wrench time? Uh, by definition, wrench time is a measure of the time a maintenance craft work worker spends applying physical effort or troubleshooting in the accomplishment of assigned work. This range time could be considered in a way like if we are doing engineering consultancy work, how much time an engineer or a draftsman is spending on actual work, how much time he's spending on reviewing the emails or chatting with the friends, or he might be spending time on looking at the social media or smartphones. There's also a threat for us while getting the productivity from the man force on the consultancy side. So, uh, but yes, range time for engineering offices should be around 80 to 90%. But in maintenance department, this top quartile is about 50% and above, not 80, 90, 80 to 90%, which is for the engineering work. And the second tier is 40 to 50 third year is 30 to 40, and fourth quarter is uh, basically uh, quartile is less than 30%. And if you try to look around with your own industry, many companies, what we have seen, uh, they are lying within third and fourth quartile, and they are not like in first two, between 30 to 40 maximum. And uh, as, as for our analysis and work, what we have done on the other projects, that is our finding. Now, it means there is a lot of room to be for the improvement. If you can go above 50%, it means there could be more uh, effective work, there could be lesser manpower requirement, and similarly, there could be a lesser backlog in the maintenance department. So, history point of view, the time motion studies have been utilized for optimization and increase in productivity since the early days of industrialization. Originally, two studies, time study and the motion study were utilized independently, but were later on combined to, the, to get a better picture of overall performance. Those were combined as motion as well as on the uh, productivity studies. The main idea behind the wrench time study, time motion both, is to capture time taken by a skilled craft worker to complete a certain task, provide all provisions and requisites are available, and then compare it with similar tasks performed by different personals. The initial value is taken as a benchmark and used for all future com comparisons and benchmarking or decision purpose. Objective, objective, as I said earlier, to increase productivity of the manpower, to decrease the productive, like uh, the backlog, and it means the manpower optimization as well. Uh, if I go by with my slide, the wrench time studies are aimed at identifying the time lost in performing non-productive activities, whether uh, personal or professional nature. Highlights of such studies are given as follows. To identify non-productive time elements, to verify effectiveness of maintenance planning, to establish a baseline which can be compared with benchmark as per best industrial practices, to identify the maintenance activities in the need of optimization. So if we see that, like uh, concept point of view, how this study could be done, so it means there would be some monitoring, uh, overseeing of the activities which are being done by the maintenance department and its various uh, individuals, and then 
uh, as a consultant or any observing party, we can identify where the time is being used effectively and where the time is not being used effectively and wherever there are gaps, like a, a decision should be taken. I remember at one place we went for audit, we found that like the people were queuing to take spares from morning to 1 p.m. So half day, the technicians were waiting for the spare to be taken and then they were sitting in the small vehicle and reaching to the site and by then the day is off and the activity is shifted to the next day. But if spares could be arranged by an independent party of the same department and those spares could be conveyed to the technicians, the time could be saved. Similarly, uh, if scaffolding and uh, issuance of spares can be arranged in parallel and uh, both activities are done in parallel, then time could be further saved. So in this way, the objective is to optimize the resources, increase productivity and optimize the manpower as well. Benefits and limitations, like it provides basically uh, like opportunity to increase productivity or optimization of the manpower, but it does not cover the quality of the work. For example, one technician could be able to do the work uh, in a small man hours and other technicians may take longer time, even though both of them are spending more, like one is spending less uh, time on the repair work, other one is spend, spending more time on the repair work, but that is a separate part. However, at least uh, the extra things where people are waiting and people are just availability of the machine or spares or skill folding or uh, like a work permit or the transport, if those kind of things are causing, those things can be optimized and the quality of the maintenance work can be seen as a separate action as well. This helps to verify the value for the paid maintenance services as well. For example, like a um, mayor equity oil and gas, like uh, the maintenance staff productivity level, industry average, then top quartiles and tracking frequency. Like industry average 35%, but the best company can go greater than 52%. And this should be, this can be checked annually. Similarly, total man hour charge to work order as a percentage of maintenance execution staff, 80%, their charge to work. And at the top quartile or the best industry practice, it can be greater than 95%. Rework, like in a industry average, is should be less than 10%, but in the best industrial practice, it could be 3%. But in the worst scenario, it could be more than 10% as well. The mean time to repair period data, equipment specific, basically it, it cannot be summarized. Like uh, if uh, we're talking about a compressor or a pump or a turbine or a steam turbine or a gas turbine. So those aspects, machines may take various times in the various uh, management levels, but it can be compared uh, as effectiveness of the maintenance activities. Now, why I'm talking about the range time, like uh, benefits or limitations, because when you are doing bench time, range time, uh, study. So it will require resources and uh, those resources would be monitoring uh, the people, uh, the functionality of the maintenance department and since these are the shadowed people who are shadowing the uh, maintenance workforce, they would be uh, spending man hours in this activity and this activity normally takes two to three months and and then let's say 10 to 15 people are taken from outside consultant who are monitoring the efficiency of the maintenance department and logging various activities and then presenting trend. So it will take time and the management need to spend money on that particular activity because you will not be getting those services free of cost. So now issue is why you should do that. So if you have to do it, there should be certain benefits. So benefits are the same, which I said earlier, like uh, uh, categories that are biggest uh, distractor from active uh, repair time, this is one thing. Need for development of focused improvement plan, the BOM improvement, reducing time to loto or work order system, improvement in communication of us, like or communicating the assignment, like uh, the, the look ahead or where people would know that if I complete this job, what I would be doing next. Improve operations and maintenance coordination, 
and then focus a job plan improvement recommendation including material tools instructions and equipment condition mobile equipment assignment uh, need to standardize maintenance practices among different units so if you see that like any range time study may cost you let's say between 150000 to 200000 us dollars or maybe let's say 200 to 300000 us dollars but the nature of benefits for a medium sized organization uh, return on investment could be quite bigger so it's worth doing a range time studies uh, to evaluate any of your performance of the maintenance crew or department so it is worth doing this that is my personal opinion but the decision has to be made by the companies like again uh, we are saying do and don't like uh, main reason for conducting a range time study is to identify basically i already explained the repetition is coming up and to identify the interdisciplinary communication gaps use data to drive improvement not to assign blame this is important then sometimes blame would be there for example if spare parts are being delayed by the warehouse or if a transportation department is unable to arrange the transportation or a support department is unable to arrange scaffolding and those kind of thing there would be certain blames also but uh, like uh, as a gap assessment point of view uh, those gaps are required to be identified so as uh, management would know that these are the weaknesses and decision making process should be faster next the caution point of view like uh, negative side if it's, it may misguide range time studies are not about finding personnel who are inefficient making mistakes or performing poorly like that is a separate part it may not be focused because sometimes there could be a fear in the people if they are being monitored they may behave negatively range time studies are about the quality of the planning and scheduling process and how effectively the organization execute both processes crew should be ensured that the study will only be used to drive positive improvement not like uh, this person was like not able to perform the job so now range time improvement well, how it can improve for example see reduce the need to do maintenance like uh, reliability of the equipment is mtpf if you can reduce empty mean time between failures like if a previous the the equipment was failing let's say once in a year at least if we can make it once in a two year once in a three year improve the effectiveness of resources needed to perform maintenance which involve people tools and contractor mptr mean mean time to repair the time which is taken for the repair activities or maintenance activities this is where range time analysis comes into play a single change cannot effectively improve range time rather a complex series of optimizations is required to improve range time improve material coordination improve planning improve scheduling increase field supervision optimize travel maintenance kpis like small uh, improvement efforts usually done on a small uh, like a specific area by a specific discipline team can last a couple of hours to a few days each event focusing on making small improvement in a systematic way can create larger uh, results in the continuously uh, done exercise aim to promote zero losses through waste identifying and correcting uh, problems with flow then improve the effective uh, use of assets reduce manufacturing cost or maintenance activities our approach like uh, how we are used to do we first try to collect information of the existing like uh, Uh, how much manpower which departments disciplines then uh, various uh, crews like from starting from the technicians helper technician foreman supervisor then uh, supervising engineers then planning engineers then their like uh, team leaders department heads and uh, various interfaces the review of policy and strategies and the maintenance management system which is being used recently then resource verification if the number of people are there which are being reported the classification of the activities like as i said uh, which are the support activities which are actual activities then resource coding with reference to their disciplines and their roles then work sampling and work order selection which we would like to follow during the monitoring process then field 
observations and data capture, uh, then work sampling calculations, then detailed data evaluation and analysis, reports and results, then observations and improvement recommendations. Uh, the last item it comes. So same thing is a workflow point of view, like uh, as I said earlier. So the same steps are just explained again. Uh, before my colleague would be starting the like, actual project, uh, what we have executed, and we'll be sharing with you. Uh, it would be a modified data. It is not actual reflection. So please don't assume or do not correlate this with the practical work what we have done. And due to secrecy agreement, we have modified almost all data. So my colleague, Mr. Uh, Vajat Malik would be starting from this slide. And at this stage, I will take, if certain questions are there, then I will hand over this presentation to my colleague, Mr. Vajat, and he would be presenting from his office. So as for now, there's no question. And uh, uh, one question is there like, uh, uh, where we can provide these services? We are providing these services in all over uh, area of the region. If, uh, if any, like uh, Middle East, uh, Far East, African region, uh, Pakistan is also part of that. If Angora would be looking for that kind of study, we would be able to extend that. So I've told uh, sound is a little bit right. Huh? It's okay now? Okay, right. Sound wise, like uh, Mr. Bajati, you need to speak a little loud, uh, loudly. That's the one message came. Right. So over to Mr. Bajat. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, Bajat Malik, I'm lead reliability engineer with Velocity. Uh, I will continue from the point uh, where Sarijaz left. Kindly let me know if the screen is visible and if I'm audible to everyone. You can just type in the chat box yes or no. Right. Um, I'll start from Sir, where Sir Jaz left. Basically, uh, wrench time concept or the time motion concepts are based on our old Japanese principle of Kaizen, uh, which basically stands for a little improvement to make a big contribution towards any tangible goal. Here in wrench time studies, just like Sir Jaz explained, we are looking for small aspects which can be improved uh towards uh, uh, such a optimized preventive or a maintenance regime which is better utilization uh, of resources in terms of human manpower in terms of uh, time so basically end of the day having a optimized maintenance regime with a streamlined process streamlined uh, uh what you can say um Coordination between the teams is uh, what we are aiming for in wrench time. Basic steps that we cover here is, uh, first of all, we are looking for uh, the data that is already held with the company, the existing regime, how they are performing maintenance, what kind of resources they are utilizing, uh, what is their current plan for certain type of major assets where major maintenance is performed. Uh, normally, what we try to do is we try to pick the major time consuming uh, assets like so just has explained a concept of MTTR, that is the time to repair. Now this time to repair varies from asset to asset. Some equipment might take lesser time, some might take more time. So wrench time, when we observed in different organizations, it was our common observation that wrench time tends to uh, decrease or the effective wrench time tends to decrease even below 30 when it comes to major assets, because there are multiple factors involved. However, when we go for a small, um, maybe calibration job for instrumentation, etc., or a very small uh, replacement job, then the range time uh, seems to be higher. Now we'll come to the point. We'll come to the detailed reasons why this is the case. However, the basic procedure: we take the existing maintenance plans, we take the existing CMS preparation or CMS, uh, what you can say, um, scheduling that is being done in the company any kind of uh, maintenance routines that are uh, deployed by the company. Then uh, what we do with this data is we actually classify it into different categories. I'll go in details what these categories are as well. The available manpower is uh, recorded in terms of manpower coding, we call it. Basically, we classify the manpower as per the uh, responsibility metrics of the company. We classify them who is responsible to perform what job. The reason this needs to be done is to make sure that the correct person is monitored during this uh, valuation. And uh, after this, we move 
toward work sampling or a work order selection. Just like I said that we try to aim for the uh, work orders or the jobs which are more complicated in nature as compared to a simple uh, task. Then the data is collected, like the field observations are made. How it is made, I'll go in detail as well. After that, we do some of our office work. It's involved like calculations, some statistical analysis of the data. And uh, overall, we provide a detailed report of what needs to be improved or what are the major, major findings during this uh, Einstein study. Right, in the first step, uh, these are some of the data sets that we generally look for. These are the essential data that any maintenance regime is supposed to have. Not necessarily they will have it in a very, uh, what you can say, very optimized form, but most of the maintenance regimes, they tend to have this type of data available with them. There has to be some kind of planning available to perform any job. There has to be some kind of uh, routines or PM plans available. There have to be a detailed task list available. Some resource planning uh, is normally present. The identification of the craft and crew as per their competencies is generally available. Then uh, we are looking, we are also looking for the bill of materials. Bill of materials, it is a common observation that uh, our, the bill of materials are always prepared during any uh, commissioning stage. However, later on, these lists or these spare parts uh, packages are not normally maintained. This is one of the biggest contributors in our observation that uh, makes the bench time lesser than the expected value. And after that, there's any other additional documentation. Basically, when we say documentation, we are looking for any additional procedures that divert the manpower from the effective bench time. Now, uh, during the assessment in the second phase, we try to identify the maintenance hierarchy of any uh, facility. When we talk about maintenance hierarchy, we are talking about whether the system has been designed in a way that it can actually be monitored, it can the maintenance can actually be traced, or whether uh, the resources assigned are actually designated to certain tasks. Because in some cases, uh, this maintenance hierarchy is not as per best practices or international standards, in which it is very difficult to actually identify what each individual resource is doing uh, during any task performance. So the task responsibility as per the uh, maintenance hierarchy is very important when we are performing this type of bench time analysis. Right. Uh, third step is resource planning verification. We go through each and every planned work order. By the way, this study can be performed for any duration of time. However, it is recommended that it should be done minimum for four and maximum for eight weeks. Why we say minimum for four is because the rota for most of the oil and gas industry, because we have performed these studies mostly for oil and gas operators. So most of the oil and gas industry, we have 14, 14 rota or our 28 to 28 rota. So that's why we try to tend, we try to execute this for four weeks or eight weeks maximum to get an average value of all the maintenance team that is involved in maintenance activities. And uh, during this verification phase, uh, we do collect all kind of uh, scheduling that is being performed. Uh, we do collect uh, a certain, uh, you can say, selected work orders. It can be a condition monitoring work order, it can be a corrective maintenance, it can be a preventive maintenance work order because uh, we tend to take an average value to identify which kind of maintenance task is actually the one with the least uh, bench value. Then uh, whether the checklists are available or not, how detailed are those, if there's anything missing, we'll, I'll come in detail why this is important. Um, verification of available resources as per schedule, whether the team is actually present that is being scheduled to perform the job or not, whether there are casual leaves uh, in the system more frequent than it should be. Then verifying the job plan according to uh, the job performed by the crew itself. Uh, the last one is uh, quite interesting, actually. What we noticed that in a couple of uh, organizations, the job order is for a certain piece of equipment that was not actually performed by the crew who were allocated for that job. Rather, they went and performed another job and came back and closed uh, the work order for whatever reason. It was 
with a mutual understanding of their production team as well but this is a bad industrial practice so this also needs to be verified whether the work has been performed or not been performed because this can contribute towards rework because if the work has been skipped without a proper scheduling or without a management of change then it was it will contribute towards rework and why rework is bad will come in the detail of that one as well right um in the next phase the activities are classified as productive or non-productive activities when we say non-productive activities it does not mean they are not necessary activities or we can just remove them from the system they are basically administrative activities it could actually be some kind of uh, procedural requirement it could actually be some kind of security requirement it could be like uh, what you can say a safety requirement so those are still required activities but those are the activities that are not necessarily to be performed by uh, the maintenance crew directly. So what we do is we categorize the activities in three basic classes. First is uh, the range time, that is the physical activity that the team is actually performing the work, like they have the tools, they are on the equipment, the equipment is ready. Then there is productive time activities. We also can count these towards range time, that is the pre or post job briefs that is necessary before any job like uh, normally uh, we uh, before the job we have a very small short meeting where the technicians or the craft are explained what needs to be uh, performed so that is necessary after the job whatever are the findings they need to be explained to the team for future uh, reference and the data needs to be recorded so that is still a necessary activity we still count it toward productive time uh, work site preparation is productive time and necessary travel that also counted as productive time okay when we talk about non-productive activities that are lunch break training and sitting idle those are directly non-productive activities whereas there are other non-productive activities that are performed during productive time hours that uh, these are basically the activities that we try to focus to eliminate when we are optimizing ranks time the first very common one is uh, waiting for any specific tool or any specific material it could be a spare part it could be some other material that is required to perform that job it could be a specific tool etc then another big contributor towards a non-productive uh, time is waiting for the permits these could be safety permits these could be isolation permits these could be production requirements or production restrictions it could actually be security permits, but all these permits, they tend to take more than 25 to 30% of the effective work day in some cases. And these are the biggest, uh, these are one of the biggest contributors to the non-productive time in uh, any organization, especially where uh, the maintenance tasks are being performed. Uh, then waiting for interdisciplinary support. This is another uh, major contributor where a certain discipline, like normally the work orders or the task orders are not interdisciplinary. They are generally specific to a certain discipline, but where that discipline needs support from another uh, department, they need to wait for their coordination or they need to wait for their teams because the other department already has their own uh, assigned task. So this waiting time also contributes toward a non-productive uh, time waste. And uh, then waiting between jobs, this is actually where the job is not being actually assigned to the craft. It's not his fault, it's actually coming from the planning or the scheduling side. These are the basic categories uh, that are normally observed in any uh, environment. And this is how the range time, uh, productive and non-productive range times are normally uh, uh, what we can say calculated right based on uh i'll just take some questions here uh because i think there are quite a few questions uh, waiting now before proceeding but i'll just take a few questions then we'll proceed to how the activities are actually uh, uh how the activities are actually coded how the activities are actually recorded All right uh raise your voice is not audible i think uh please let me know if the voice is now audible because i've tried to uh improve it let me just see yes it's audible now thank you Ali. so i will close this one uh how to maintain the quality of work see when it comes to quality of work there are many different techniques 
uh, Venge time is not necessarily a very good tool to uh, what you can say monitor the quality of work. Rework monitoring can give you a good idea of uh, ensuring that quality of work. But again, the quality of work actually depends on the capability of the craft itself. Trainings of verification of task perform, uh, what you can say, uh, proper use of the equipment, that is a better uh, measure or that is a better technique to actually control the quality of work. The well-trained supervisor or a well-trained craft can ensure a better quality of work rather than using a rework as a criteria. Rework can be a criteria, but it's not a very good criteria to ensure quality of work. Uh, next question is, is it written that rent time, uh, represent time, use of physical activity, does it also include the work spent on non-tangible items? See, some of the non-tangible items, just like I mentioned that if uh, there are certain things that must be done, like set up and take down, or what you can say, necessary travel, especially for the work, uh, I mean, arranging your tools with proper calibration, etc. So that is uh, contributed towards rent time. But if there are other times where the craft is not actually performing anything and he's just waiting for somebody else, then that is not uh, rent time. If you don't apply rent time, then what will happen? What's the outcome? Well, if you don't apply rent time, then uh, most probably the resource that you have assigned for a certain task will not be better utilized in terms that more than 30 to 40 percent of your cost of your manpower will actually be going towards based that towards the activities which are not actually necessary to perform this uh, job what is the primary work should company do okay uh, mr Essen, i could not understand your question could you please repeat that question the relationship between availability and rent time, there are two different things, availability, reliability, rent time, there are different concepts. Availability is basically the minimum downtime from any system, and it is not associated with the rent time. Rent time is optimization of your scheduling and optimization of your cost to perform the maintenance activities. The next question is, is rent time applied to only maintenance? Can it be applied to other departments? Yes, it can be applied to, uh, to any, to be honest, it can be applied to any activity, not necessarily department. But uh, since we are uh, generally uh, dealing with oil and gas, we are an oil and gas consultant. So we are normally dealing with oil and gas companies. And since I am from the maintenance department, so our references, you will find them are normally for maintenance because the rents time is least in maintenance activities, not necessarily because of any fault of the maintenance department itself, but it is normally observed to be very low in maintenance activities. If you compare it with other activities like office-based activities, or even in some case, uh, specific manufacturing activities, you will find that rent time is much higher in those activities. Same goes for inspection activities. When inspection and maintenance, they both tend to have the least rent time uh, because these are the activities or these are the two departments which are impacted by other activities most frequently. Next question is rent time definition is for maintenance craft worker. What is the tool metric to perform measurement of maintenance engineer management employee? See, that has to be decided by your own internal training requirement. When you say that you need a certain uh, metric for the performance measurement, then ha that has to be defined by every company has their own criteria to define uh, the uh, what you can say capability of their craft. So that has to be defined by an internal training uh, department. That's not necessarily defined by any rent time. Right. I will proceed a little further there's another question uh rent time more related to kpis uh, to some extent rent time can be one of the kpis not more related to kpis it can be one of the kpis yes there's another department that collecting such there there's another question that collecting such data may cause insecurity in the workforce as they may think that they are being tested i'll come to that actually Sarija has already uh, mentioned that there are some uh, cautions that need to be taken when you're performing rent time study i'll just go back quickly to answer your question see when you are performing any rent time study, then there are certain, uh, the good literature, literature available on the topic will actually guide you that there are certain precautions that you need to take. There are certain uh, measures that need to be ensured before such observation is made. You need to ensure your people that this study is not based or this study is not aimed at uh, uh, their effectiveness or the monitoring their mistakes or their performing ability. It's not uh, aimed at that. 
So if you take your workforce in confidence, then this threat does not happen. Normally, when we uh, go to sites, our engineers or our uh, observers, they are with the uh, maintenance team for a very extended time. And uh, initially, yes, they do see some resistance or some change in behavior from the maintenance team. But once they realize that this is not going to affect their job in any way, uh, it's not actually monitoring their performance in any way. So then um, they're okay with it. It's not an insecurity. This is something that has to be ensured by the management itself to make sure that the people are not threatened by these activities. Because if they are threatened, you won't get the right data for it. You won't get the actual outcome that you're looking for from this study. So everything comes with some precautions that need to be taken. Right. Um, now, <clears throat> I'll continue with the presentation now. We'll take some a few more questions after a while. Right. So what we uh, do generally is in uh, in a maintenance environment or an inspection environment, because there was a question regarding inspection, we uh, divide them in three categories. One is working, one is waiting, one is miscellaneous. Working is basically whatever is must required and that is contributed towards uh, range time. Waiting is a non range time. Miscellaneous can be a range time and it can also be considered as a break time. Not necessarily it has to be deducted from the effective working hour of the uh, team itself. Then uh, resource coding is normally done with whatever manpower is available for a certain task. It can, this is just an example. You don't necessarily have to divide them this way. This is just an example, uh, like uh, for example, this is for a maintenance crew or maintenance team. They have some supervisors, they have some technicians, they have some helpers, they might have some subcontractors, etc. So they are categorized with the, the designation as well as employee number. Now, this is where uh, the threat comes into play. The, the question was related uh, to this thing that can we identify the people who have performed bad in the range time study or who have been observed to be performing less than expected. So yes, this data can be collected, but it must, does not need to be utilized in this way. This is what you need to explain to your teams before performing the range time study. So the designation and the numbers are present here or the employee no codes are present in this study. Then we perform the actual uh, observation or as you call it, the time motion observations basically. In the time motion observation, basic data that you do is, uh, I think I'll try to explain it with another, yeah, sorry, this one. Uh, in this uh, sheet or in this observation uh, sheet, you will see that you have a category that is called a time of day, an observation category, workout number, observation day, day of week, supervisor ID, observation, observed time, and comments like what category the range time is lying into. Then each sheet, has to be for a certain work order. The total time for that work order is also monitored here. Now, what is uh, what are these categories? When we say time of day, we need to uh, break down the total working hours into certain set of uh, time periods. Reason being, because uh, when we'll go in the results, I'll show you that during uh, the day as the day progresses, the range time tends to change. And this is not an observation for one or two facilities. This is just a general observation for multiple facilities. That's why what we do is we tend to break the day into different time periods. This is where the first value is coming from. When it says time of day, it is just the time period or the observed time, uh, what you can say observed time slot in which this observation was made. Then the next category is observation category. Now this observation category is basically this the description the activities that we defined before these activities are actually assigned with a category code like for example when somebody is waiting for a permit then it will be categorized as with a certain code if somebody is uh, waiting for materials it will be categorized with a different code if he's on break if he's idle if it's he's in training meeting there is a weather condition that is not allowing him to work etc so there are different activity codes. In this case, there were about 21 to 22 activity codes, but these vary from uh, organization to organization, setup to setup. So the second category you see here, uh, activity code or observed category is basically out of those assigned activity codes. Then there's work order numbers, pretty straightforward. 
the observation date is arbitrary date basically whenever the work order is issued whenever it is being executed day of the week is also a very uh, interesting factor here just like the range time tends to change over uh, time of the day it also tends to change uh, as per the day of the week you will find that workforce uh, tend to have a higher range time during the initial few days of the week and as the weekend approaches the trend changes then there's a supervisor id and the total time observed for any particular category uh, like these are similar to what the category codes are however these are more descriptive comments so the observed time while uh, a certain task was being or while a certain activity or certain coded activity was being performed so time is observed in this column and there are some calculations we'll go into detail later now <clears throat> when we say work sampling calculation basically we take the complete working time that is allocated to any uh, craft member for example if somebody is working from let's say seven o'clock to seven forty five to four thirty the, the reason we are keeping it as four thirty in this case is because last thirty minutes is break in this particular case where this was observed so basically he has eight point seven five hours or five minutes twenty five minutes that he needs to perform work and there are a few breaks like he has a lunch break and he has a, a tea break etc so out of this he will effectively have this is an observation for a single entity what you can see is that he has effectively worked for 29 percent of time where the activities are actually contributing towards range time total time assigned 525 minutes non-working time that he actually spent uh, out of this 525 minutes uh, he has worked 85 minutes so i'll explain it again this observation is 85 minutes where the activities are actually range time total he had a 525 minutes so basically 85 minutes out of 100 525 minutes is approximately 29.4 percent time is actual work time of this particular car this is like one observation uh, that was made. So the collected data of a complete maintenance day is analyzed on a cumulated basis. The time motion uh, observations are made for a single workforce, whether it is a temporary workforce or a permanent working crew, and it will be observed throughout the day. Wherever he's assigned a new task, the task observation will change his recording will change because all the other parameters they need to be monitored accordingly but if he's performing only one task throughout the day then this is a very basic formula how the range time will be calculated uh work sampling uh, code sorry work description coding i've already explained this is an essential part of work sampling and uh, you can see here that uh, throughout of these 69000 uh, recorded minutes 53.1 percent was approximately bench time i will go in more details of how this data was recorded in another example as well but from here you can see that the person were actually working for 33 percent uh, of the allocated time they were actually waiting for a task to be assigned for approximately 15 percent of the allocated time then they were waiting for isolation or security permits for approximately 7% of the allocated time. Breaks are perfectly fine. There is no issue. We don't need to uh, revise them. They were taking personal breaks or personal time during work time for approximately 5% of the allocated time. And work-related travel tends to be about 9% of the allocated time. So these are some of the factors that need to be looked into. Also, another contributor is where the production team is required to ensure or to uh, modify the parameters for the maintenance team to either complete their job or to actually perform their job that is also 3.4 percent similarly when they need support from a different department it's approximately three percent of the allocated time is where they were just waiting for another department to support them so these are mostly the scheduling and planning parameters that need to be looked into to optimize or to improve the uh, range time. Now, 
when we uh, break it down department wise you will find that discipline wise this range time also tends to uh, vary now mechanical team they seem to have uh, this is just one example mechanical team seems to have an average value of range time electrical team more or less average value of range time instrument or control team more or less the same value of range time however the independent interdependencies you will see that actually change as per the discipline electrical team don't need support from much departments mechanical they don't need support from other departments that much however the instruments are totally depending or relying much more on the other departments the permits they are more or less same delays for everyone then you will see the traveling is slightly higher for electrical in this case however on the average it is more or less same the personal behavior stays to be more or less same uh, then uh, there is another one that we need to observe is uh, production 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 where is production it's not shown here but i can show you from another example that the production in the dependency that also uh, yeah waiting for operator you will find that is also uh, much higher for the control or instrumentation team as compared to the other two uh, disciplines so these are some of the factors that need to be considered while we uh, make uh, these range time observations that certain departments or certain disciplines they perform in a certain way that is required to complete their jobs or that is must to perform their jobs now these uh, observation they also tend to vary as per uh, the area or the working environment you will find that in certain environments the rent time seems to be higher as compared to other environments this is to some extent related to uh, the supervision or the planning part, but to some extent it is actually related to the factors like uh, security reasons or what we can call it, uh, the permits as we call them, the isolation requirements or the safety reasons, they tend to be much, much higher in some areas. So these are also one of the biggest contributors towards uh, uh, lesser rent time. However, where these values are smaller or where these values are less you will actually find that the range time tends to be higher so this is like one example that was also uh, observed during this uh, project previously i showed you one example where that was out of six nine thousand minutes that is a whole month recording then this is uh, minutes kept per category per facility because that was combined for all the facilities is for an individual facility more or less same picture we'll be seeing here as well there is not much difference i'll go to discipline wise it's almost the same there's not much difference for example calculations here you will again see that depending on the plant unit these uh, values they tend to vary and similarly the factors associated the factors that we have just discussed they are actually varying because of which the range time itself tends to vary uh, among these different uh, units or different plants. Okay, now once the data has uh, been captured, what we actually do is we calculate the overall range time. This is to give you an idea like how the facility is performing overall. Then a discipline wise analysis needs to be performed. This is just to identify the underlying factors like interdisciplinary support, uh, production support, spare parts, etc. So this interdisciplinary uh, range time and evaluation gives a good idea about those things. Then plant specific range time. This is normally done to identify any kind of delays due to the geographical location of the facility or due to the security or the permits requirement for a certain facility. Then we actually perform the study for the contract and direct hire. Uh, in this case, uh, most of the oil and gas operators, they tend to rely on the contract hire uh, subcontractors as well. So to ensure that the data that has been collected is average value of the overall facility, so contract hire and direct hire, they are independently uh, captured, but they are a part of the overall average value. Then uh, the complete data has to be captured without missing any time of day to ensure that the complete picture is present. 
this has to be divided into a certain time if they are passed just like I explained above. If you break down the data in this way, it will give a very good baseline of what is the existing situation and what needs to be improved to, in, uh, in, to achieve a higher quartile in this lens time or to make the company at par with uh, best industries which are having a much higher uh, rank in the lens time. Okay, uh, this is again an explanation of how it was done that we have collected all the data and then the margin of error was uh, kept to be at 5% in this particular case, the data observed uh, was an accumulated value of uh, the complete days, any activity which was less than five minutes because we are not actually trying to capture who's going for water more times. So any activity which is for less than five minutes, it needs to be ignored here and it needs to be rounded off. And uh, the margin of error has to be kept uh, towards a realistic value to make the data more presentable. This is a management representation of what was observed during this study, like how the day is actually spent on any certain facility. This is for a particular facility that it is being displayed. 34% of the time people were working, 1% they are taking for setup and take down, 8% is traveling, then there is a weather delay as well, certain weather conditions they are unable to perform. You will see the people were actually waiting for certain tools, waiting for operators, material. Certain period of time people were not even known where they were, they did not bother to inform anyone. And uh, people could be taking personal breaks, they could be a multidisciplinary support, etc. So, all these things they are uh, presented in different uh, developed and graphical form for better understanding. Now, when I was saying that time of day needs to be observed independently, is because when you see these plots, you will find that as the day starts, most of the time is actually spent just waiting for certain permits all the way up till nine o'clock, most of the time is being spent just waiting for the clearance to actually perform the job. You will see from the accumulated data, 6,700 minutes and 4,900 minutes. Almost you will count it as 12,000 minutes waited just for permit clearance. This red one is actually permit delay, as you can see from here, just for the permit clearance. Nine o'clock, they start working. The workforce that actually came to site at 7.30, nine o'clock, they start working. You will see their performance is almost through the peak. The range time observed at this particular interval is probably more than 60%, as you can see. As the day progresses, uh, this tends to decrease, but this is not actually decreasing. There's a small tea break in, in the middle. So they are on break actually. So. Then again, their performance is okay. As soon as the lunch break hits, after lunch break, people tend to either just sit and wait. This category that we are looking at, this is actually waiting for a work assignment. So after two o'clock, not much work is being done. And in the last hour, almost literally nothing is being done. People are just waiting. When you ask the schedulers, this is where the scheduling and planning comes into action. <clears throat> Apologies. When you ask the schedulers, they will say, what can I assign him that will only take one hour? This is where the planning comes into effect. You need to plan the activities accordingly. If you know a certain activity is going to take more time, either you assign it accordingly in the earlier part of the day. Don't start with the smallest activity in the start. Yes, it's a very good practice in uh, probably uh, educational system or when we are taking examination, we are advised to attempt the shortest one first, but that does not work in uh, real life environment. You need to start with the biggest activity in the beginning. So end of the day, you have the small activities to perform here, like a small replacement job uh, for electrical and instrument team. They can easily be performed between two o'clock to five o'clock. You have good three hours to perform this job. So this is a thing that maintenance and scheduling looks need to look into. This is a thing that the management needs to look into. These are the two major factors that we observe are actually reducing the effective runs, events time of this particular facility from where this example is taken. And it's the same example, I think, without the numerical values, just to make it a little bit easy to see. 
Uh, by the way, you will find that the personal behavior, like the unaccountable, it stays the same throughout the day. Like some people, they just go missing somewhere here and there without informing anyone. That almost stays the same throughout the day. It's not depending on whether it is break time or not. But the major contributing values towards a non-productive time, they are more or less uniform. Right. Um, overall results, when we talk about best-in-class values that normally are aimed for as per the available data in this industry, oil and gas industry is about 45 to 55% that needs to be aimed at especially for maintenance scheme. This is not necessarily for engineering or some office-based jobs because there was a question whether it can be applied to other uh, jobs as well. Yes, it can be applied, but this average value we are representing here, representing here is from maintenance excellence, uh, uh, what do you call it, maintenance excellence um, department. And uh, they are actually, they have actually uh, devise these values or average these values for the oil and gas operators. So 55% is what you need to target for. However, without a good planning and uh, proper scheduling, you won't be able to achieve this value. Then uh, rather than going for excessive preventive maintenance, because see more excessive preventive maintenance and rework are also a very big contributor towards uh, backlog and backlog is when the firefighting starts. This is when the rent time goes down. In case of uh, a backlog or in case of a team which is already under pressure, they tend to run around looking for things. Things are not planned properly and then they cannot get a proper um, or a required, what you can say, um, value out of their resources. They get a lesser rent time than it, they should be getting from this one. So, when we uh, talk about maintenance techniques, we tend to recommend that a productive technologies should be preferred over the preventive technologies or the preventive techniques to help uh, plan the maintenance in a better way so that the backlog is minimum. Now, typical range time in a reactive environment is observed to be less than 30%. It's like I said, because if everyone is running around looking for things, trying to execute or trying to reduce the backlog, you cannot expect a good work environment, you cannot expect a good branch time from this uh, type of creative environment. In this uh, project, in this particular example, it was observed to be around 34%. This is more or less average, but uh, in, in this particular example, their problem was not uh, mostly related to the backlog, their problem was more related to uh, the permits or the isolations or the interdepartmental uh, assistance. It was more related to that. Then material coordination or the availability of material coordination uh, was observed to be another major factor. There's a concept of material kitting. Uh, we know that in the new, uh, the optimized maintenance regimes, the bill of materials are actually linked uh, with uh, the uh, preventive maintenance routines or uh, what we call it the job plans. However, whether these materials are already kitted and ready to be issued is a question because if your material coordination is not good and once the work order is printed in the morning then your technician has to go to the warehouse give the list and wait for that guy to make the kit then it's not going to help if a particular bill of material list is already available in the system the job is already planned in the system then the uh, material management team needs to coordinate with the planning team to prepare the material package beforehand so this will also help reduce the 5% variance that we saw up there. Field supervision and coordination between the maintenance crew and supervisor. Again, this is more related to the interdepartmental support, whether the mechanical is waiting for electrical or electrical is waiting for production, etc. So the supervisors, if they uh, tend to coordinate in a better effective way, this time can also be reduced. Decrease or optimize work travel. This category is necessary, but it needs to be optimized. Just like we explained that necessary work travel is a range time, but it needs to be optimized in a way that the time is not uh, 
wasted or a time is not uh, spent sitting idle for example if you already have a planned activity for a facility which is about let's say a few hundred uh, kilometers away you can probably start the team up early the material should be available there rather than team reach at site and then wait for the material to be delivered so a well coordinated activity will actually decrease or minimize this uh, particular uh, how you can say wastage of uh, effective time time then the progress needs to be measured uh, this progress measuring is basically that whatever uh, time is actually spent as observed by the uh, what you can say the supervisors the feedback needs to be provided to the planning and scheduling department yes the planners and schedulers they are very experienced people but they don't know the exact ground realities with time those realities are changing but that feedback is not actually going to the planning team if they have scheduled a certain activity let's say for uh, x y z any pump for 8 hours they will continue to do that for 8 hours for all similar pumps provided that pump is in the same situation in the same location in the same condition same prerequisites are there they will not consider that so those factors they need to be provided to them that feedback loop has to be there to improve the rent style <clears throat> Before going to observations and recommendations, I'll just quickly go through a few more questions. Waiting for permit, why is this not included in the rent time effectiveness? Because waiting for permit is not a fault of the maintenance team that needs to be coordinated before the team has to start uh, their work. And uh, that's why it is not uh, considered as a rent time activity. That's one of the biggest loss in rent time actually. The next one is, can you consider the productive time as value added time in quality management and non-productive time as a non-value added time? Now, see, as I said, productive and non-productive activities are basically not in terms of whether they are not necessary. All the activities that we discussed here, they are necessary activities. They just need to be executed in a manner where the resources are more effectively utilized activities like for example when we are talking about isolation permits they are necessary uh, like travel time that is necessary if i go to the non-productive activity because the question is related to non-productive activities when we are talking about all these activities they are necessary but they need to be organized or optimized in a way that it should not waste your useful time all of these are necessary activities, whatever is mentioned here, except for maybe sitting idle, because sitting idle is a lack of planning, to be honest. And they are necessary activities, but the optimization is required. I hope this answers your question. These are not non-value added activities. They are necessary activities. Next question is, uh, can we consider the following for uh, time? Traveling, preparation, waiting for material is not a rent time. Waiting for operation is not a rent time. Office work, it depends. If it is directly related to your work, then yes, it is rent time. Otherwise, no. Preparation is rent time. But waiting, wherever the term waiting comes, that is basically that needs to be looked into. It not, does not necessarily need to be in rent time. Shift change and overtime. See, shift change is like a, uh, if you consider shift change, that is a planned shift change, then that is a break time. It cannot be contributed towards rent time. Again, waiting, uh, there's another question. Should we consider waiting as a part of the rent time? See, when the term waiting comes into the play, why, why are you waiting for spare parts? Why the material management cannot be handled independently of uh, the maintenance team? the planner knows what needs to be issued in terms of basic spares. The material management team knows what needs to be done. The activity is already planned, so why they need to wait for it? This is where we are recommending that the material kitting philosophy should be implemented. People should not just go uh, to the planning department before executing the work, give them the list, and then wait one or two hours for them to prepare the package. The package should be ready. They should go, collect, get it issued, start the work. So rather than, uh, like I showed you, the waiting for material was about 40 to 45 minutes on average. So that can maybe come down to 10 to 15 minutes. Even that would be a big contribution. It's another question. How can we define wrench time in comparison with mean time to repair? Wrench time is also a measurable KPI, yes. 
it is comparison to mean time to repair mean time to repair just like i said mean time to repair is uh, somehow linked to range time but not necessarily associated with range time because mttr values depends on the equipment itself on systems complexity itself but if you consider the complete uh, work order time as mean time to repair then yes the range time will come into play because if you will decrease uh, the non effective uh, activities improve the range time then your mttr value will also come down however mttr is a technical term is not uh, as i said directly explained in terms of range time another question the housekeeping shall be a part of the range time it is necessary so it has to be a part of the range time by the way in our observation in four to five facilities that i have visited uh, cleanup is not or housekeeping does not take much time you can see that from our example as well not much time was spent in this housekeeping activity <clears throat> what is the main purpose to enhance the performance decrease the range uh, we are trying to increase the effective range time the main purpose see you have allocated 100 man hours for one day if those man hours out of those man hours if you are only getting work done for 33 man hours that is what this graph was just explaining to us that if you have like uh, 100 hours is allocated and you are only getting 33 or 34 hours of work done rest of your uh, 67 hours are wasted so that is a waste of resources both in terms of manpower in terms of time in terms of cost so that's why we are looking to improve the range time not performance the range time that we are looking to improve so another question we are talking about uh, Range time rather than waiting time for security clearance. I, I believe you're trying to write range time here because you wrote um, then lunch time. Uh, waiting time for security clearance, work clearance, so we can focus on waiting for working day by mailing the calls. Any alternative solution? See, uh, when specifically it comes to security clearance, we are not considering that here. Security clearance for a certain area, yes. Like we are talking about, let's take an example of a well site. If you have an independent security team on the well site and your maintenance crew have to perform a task there on a certain day, they first report to their own facility. They go through the whole 30 minutes of security procedure. Then they will go to the uh, well site facility, again, go through the security procedure. So in such cases, the security clearance to minimize the time, you can either send the team directly to that site or avoid one of the security clearance or arrange the security uh, clearance in a way that should not be deducted from the effective time of the team itself if you have to give them certain overtime for it and send them a bit early that will still help you because that will take the uh, this particular six percent out of it that means throughout the day when they will end of the day sit there for a 14% of time, wait, wait for the assignment because there is not enough time left. You can better utilize this time with this one. So instead of 34, you'll end up with 40% of range time. And maybe since they will have more spare time end of the day, you will also get some segment of this time. That's why we are saying the security uh, clearance or the permit delays. See, not this, this one is not necessarily security clearance. This is also permit delays. So this needs to be optimized in a better way. This is what we are trying to say here. Will there be a benefit if the company has dedicated permit to work office? Yes, definitely. Is it a standardized method of calculating? See, when you talk about standardized method, there are certain um, maintenance or what you can say, certain optimization techniques that are documented, but they are not standardized. Reason they are not standardized is because most recently we have seen many reliability standards developing, uh, many evil, uh, reliability availability standards developing is because with time things are getting more, uh, what you can say, uh, accounted, more um, documented. This range time is not yet that kind of standardized like you won't find a particular standard for it but you'll find a lot of techniques a lot of literature for it that is already in practice for many years my i mean decades from now if you i quoted an example of kaizen that's a japanese technique which is about 45 to 50 years old they have been implementing implementing this 
but yes you will find many techniques to perform uh, the similar studies they the techniques will be more or less similar one might be better slightly better than the other one so feel free to browse through them so getting a work order moving towards the site is a part yes necessary work travel is a part of rent the question is after getting the work order moving towards the site whether it should be considered as rent time see necessary work travel yes that is that should be considered as a part of the effective time that is in our opinion but unnecessary work travel or uh, excessive work travel unplanned work travel that is not considered as a part of rent time plan and non plan actions uh, yes not plan and non plan both activities see uh, this average value that we are seeing this is for a uh, corrective preventive condition based emergency all kind of work orders are averaged here so yes all kind of activities are considered in this case what time the rent time starts and ends mr hanif i did not get your question basically uh, when we talk about rent time we are taking observations throughout the day Uh, there is not certain time for it to start. Uh, what we do is we categorize uh, the whole day into certain time periods, and throughout the day, uh, the observations are made. I think this is what we are trying to ask. Thanks to everyone. Also, these two maintenance money for reduction. No, see, this is where uh, this is a very common mistake. Rent time optimization will never lead to your uh, maintenance manpower reduction. If you will make this threat, then uh, you will never achieve a good rent time from your team. I remember a very good example. Um, back in uh, I think it was in Saudi DR one project I was working there, and um, one of the fabricators, he used to go haywire off and on, and he used to disappear from sight. So one day I caught him sleeping under a line, and I asked him. I woke him up and I asked him. like why do you do this i mean you're getting paid for this time so why do you spend it uh, i mean fooling around here and there he was cautioned many times before but he just did not want to do it to himself and his first response to me was that if i finish this then what do i do tomorrow so if you try to threaten them that this will reduce the manpower then you will never get good uh, rent time out of them then they will tend to uh in fact if they feel threatened you will actually find that this category the yellow category will increase to a much higher value so the purpose of rent time just like uh, before i started my colleague sir jasi uh, gave us few cautions that the purpose is not to identify individuals who are performing less for that you already have your supervisors you already have your um that you can say evaluation teams for your uh, maintenance staff it is their task to identify who is performing less and what needs to be done to improve their uh, working methodology or in, to improve their performance it is not the task of a rent time study to identify the individuals who are uh, less performing so no it will not uh, reduce the manpower you will actually get more work done out of the same manpower most probably is there a software solution available uh so oh we uh, miss anya uh, our software team can probably help you with this oh uh, at the moment we have our own well plant software that can perform different type of analysis like this is uh, the rent time this is the template that we use for rent time analysis so probably our software team can help you integrate into well plant software as well so yes you may find some software solutions and in these uh, softwares you just enter the parameters different values are entered different observations are entered and end of the day you can make any kind of i mean graphic representation etc so that option is there yes we can find a software solution for this we have an example from construction no sorry sir we don't have an example from construction industry but from maintenance we have a couple of example examples uh, mostly to do with uh, oil and energy sector but there are some other also fertilizer plants etc while collecting the data does uh, one inspector will be appointed to check the worker from the station uh, to work site till completion yes uh normally how this observation is made is a certain observer is assigned to a certain work order who whoever are the crafts associated with that work order whether they are from uh, the planning department whether they are from uh, the maintenance execution department whether they are from uh, the material management department all of them they are observed during uh, the complete duration of the work order itself that's why you will see that these observation sheets uh, when we make them 
we make them as per the work order. The work order number is mentioned here and the total minerals captured for that work order, these are also uh, captured during this observation. So the reason it is work order associated is to make sure that the complete activity is monitored. And once that work order is finished, then immediately for the same crew or for the same team, next work order will be issued and they will continue their uh, observation. In case of job delay sensor, I did not get your question. Could you please ask the question again? That the sequence of job delay, I did not get your question. If you're not using range time, what will happen? See, it's not about using range time. Range time is an indication of how effectively uh, the maintenance planning and coordination and uh, clearances and permit system is working. If you are not observing the range time or if you're not uh, um, optimizing those activities, then the effective working uh, that you will get from your team it will decrease. If that decreases, you'll be spending more to get less work out of the same team. So this is the, one of the disadvantages that you will get if you, these things are not optimized. What are the preparations from planning in the part of the range time? Uh, I've already addressed the planning quite in detail, like uh, the material optimization, the time optimization, the team optimization, the activity optimization, and most if uh, necessarily work assignment. This needs to be uh, looked into by the planning departments directly. <clears throat> right. Now I'll continue with the presentation and we'll take a few more questions. It's just, I think, few more minutes left. Right. Uh, some of the observations during um, one of the studies. One of the observations is that the material management and movement takes a sufficient part of the schedule. Although the maintenance supervisors try their best to uh, minimize the effect by assigning crew with the small task, but the solution is only temporary. This is what I was uh, addressing earlier, that in the early part of the day, they don't get the required spares. Once they don't get the required spares, they try tend to assign their teams with other small tasks just to keep them busy. If you assign your team with small tasks in early part of the day, just because the material is not available, that is not a good practice. Because end of the day, again, they will not have uh, small work that can be performed in the last few minutes of the day. So it is recommended that uh, material kitting should be used, material should be prepared in advance. Uh, in, uh, I mean, uh, the fuel should be planned and prepared in form of packaging before the work order is actually issued and uh, the bill of material or the spare part list for any particular work order, it should uh, be assigned in any uh, CMS system that the company is using. If you are going for a paperless environment, it's better just to have an e-list available with uh, each uh, equipment. It is observed that the quality and the methodology of maintenance work performed varies from area to area. This was another observation and it is actually related uh, to the quality of work. There are a few questions about that as well that I just answered. Um, first of all, range time is not a measure of quality of work, but in this technique, you can make some observations that can help you standardize uh, the quality of work. Here, what the observation was, that area-wise, different supervisors have prepared their own different task lists. They were not uh, using the standardized task list. To execute the same job in some areas, people were performing, let's say, four to five activities only. In the other areas, the same job was being executed by using maybe more than 10 to 15 activities. Quality of work would be better in 15 activities, but what is actually required needs to be standardized by the maintenance team themselves. The maintenance supervisors, they need to sit, the maintenance engineers, they need to decide and finalize what must needs to be done. There should be proper checklists and those checklists should be ensured to be executed throughout the facility. Somebody wants to do something extra, an individual supervisor wants to go an extra mile, very good. That's an excellent effort. But the standardized requirements should be met because in this observation, it was noted that people were actually uh, cutting shortcuts just to save some time, and uh, that is not a good practice. 
It has been observed that some supervisors fail to attend the planning maintenance meeting. This is also a bad practice. If the supervisors are not attending the meeting, that means they're not providing the required feedback. And if the required feedback is not going to planners or the schedulers, they won't have a real picture of the available resources, the real picture of the equipment conditions. See, when we talk about MTTR, MTTR strictly depends on the complexity of the job to be performed, the condition of the equipment as well. Uh, to perform a same maintenance task on equipment that is in a, to which are, to perform, sorry about that. I think there was something wrong with my computer. So to perform the same task on equipment, which is in a very healthy or a very good condition, it may require lesser time, but if the equipment has a lot of surprise work orders or surprise um, breakdown when you actually open it, then the activity is going to take much longer and it will generate a lot of new child work orders. So in that condition, that feedback needs to go back to the planners that X, Y, Z equipment, please consider some additional time for that one because it might not finish in the required time. Now, here what happens is, like, if they are unable to, uh, since the activity was only performed for three to four hours, and if they're unable to uh, close that equipment or they are unable to complete that job in the same day, the job gets delayed. So leave it there, they move on, and this time the equipment comes into play. Then the job is rescheduled again. So that is also a wastage of time, both for the maintenance team and for the planning team. So that's why the feedback from the supervisors on the ground realities is must that it should go back to the supervisors on a regular basis. Task list and the job plans, they need to be optimized and they need to be standardized that I already explained. And uh, there should be a management of change procedure. If somebody wants to improve or remove something from a standardized company checklist or a job plan, then it has to go through a MOC process. Although the company maintenance management caters for most of the aspects of uh, maintenance performance, that is observed that the maintenance quality management system is not in place. This is a specific uh, observation for a specific operator. They did not have a quality management system in place and whatever the supervisor thought is enough was considered to be enough. And uh, in some cases it was observed that plant-wise the rework value is varying very drastically because if a certain supervisor is not ensuring the quality in a way that it is required then obviously rework will originate and when rework originates then it starts toward backlog firefighting and all that issues they start so that's why a certain quality standards need to be uh, managed it's not a part of the bench time to monitor this but it can be an observation that can be observed during the range time. You will actually find the different supervisors, the range time categories, the values you, when you see them growing, you will know that uh, this is a quality issue. This is not particularly a uh, uh, range time issue. It has been observed that the corrective amount of work orders are raised for any malfunctioning equipment without a proper cause analysis. This is another, this is almost linked to the earlier point that I explained that if the work is not performed properly, or if the surprise work order or the child work orders were not earlier identified by using a different technique, then they uh, just start a high category, high uh, priority or an emergency work order just to close that particular equipment and bring it back into production. So instead of firefighting all the time, it needs to be uh, a proper root cause analysis needs to be performed to ensure that this kind of emergency work orders are minimized. There are a few more observations, I'll quickly go through them. Uh, during the review of company work order management procedure, we observed that the maintenance policies are in line with the personnel, although there's only one backlog for preventive and corrective maintenance. Yes, it is recommended by the reliability experts that the corrective and preventive backlogs should be independent of each other. During uh, the site data collection has been observed that the maintenance technicians are also supporting the ongoing project activities. Yes, this was another uh, observe, major observation. Uh, when there are some project-based activities in progress, they tend to take a higher priority over the routine maintenance activities. Either the project support team should be allocated separate manpower or they should be dealt in, uh, independently of the routine maintenance work. Because 
this kind of interruption or this kind of cross planning sometimes affects the existing maintenance regime or existing maintenance uh, execution. So this, this is also a recommendation that the project support should be dealt independently. It has been observed that the operation department is raising 30 work orders without registering it in Maxima. This is a very common practice. Uh, production or maintenance team, they can get what they want. So, but this practice needs to be stopped and they should be uh, trained on what is an emergency work order and what is not an emergency work order. It has been observed that the oil movement operators do not have sufficient access to communication or transport. This was a general observation for improvements, not necessarily related to rent time. There's an observation that they do not have uh, proper transportation available. So this was a recommendation from the project. It has been observed that most of the critical drawings are outdated. This is also my recommendation for the project that if your engineering data is not updated, how do you expect the maintenance team to perform a good maintenance? They will always find surprises when they open the equipment or when they try to uh, perform any kind of bypass uh, or troubleshooting of the equipment if the engineering data is uh, not in order. So engineering data should always be updated. It has been observed that isolation, electrical isolation in particular, was only initiated after the start of maintenance day. Yes, this was another observation. There was a question also that uh, these permit delays, uh, how they should be catered. See, when uh, we are talking about permit delays which are related to production or isolation, we all know that the in uh, the production facilities, the production or the operation team will be running two to three shifts. So if a certain maintenance activity is planned to be executed on a certain day, the maintenance team will only come at seven o'clock. The production team is only present there since the morning. So they can probably perform this particular isolation before the maintenance team arrives because if the activity is already planned and the equipment has been cleared to be taken down for maintenance, there is nothing stopping the production team from this activity. It would help the maintenance team to quickly come. They can just isolate the system and start their working. So this will also help improve the range time. That 6% delay that we saw, it will fall down to a much lesser value. It has been observed that the maintenance crew uh, in the most units finished uh, their daily activities by 15.45. Yeah, this was the observation that I earlier explained that by the end of the day, they are just sitting for one to two hours ID. It has been observed that some of the equipment in a certain unit has passed its service life. So excellent study was another recommendation from this um, project. Uh, based on this study, uh, why it was recommended that this obsolete study should be uh, carried out is because if the equipment is very old and the condition of the equipment is uh, not cost effective to be repaired anymore, it needs to be addressed at a higher level, whether the equipment should be re uh, evaluated, whether it should be refurbished, or whether it should be replaced. Uh, this observation, I believe, was related to some gas engines which were um, off and on going for corrective maintenance work orders. It has been observed that some of the new equipment does not have adequate number of reserve spares. Spare part optimization is necessary for all equipment, whether they are new or old. Without optimized spare part inventory, at the time of maintenance, you realize that some of the long read items are missing and that can create havoc in the planning. It has been observed that the temporary workforce is presently not being scheduled and can be utilized as per work requirement. This is another, um, what you can say, shortcoming that if there is some certain school of workforce available, it should be scheduled to be utilized because what they were doing was that uh, the temporary workforce, they were not scheduling them. They were just being engaged off and on whenever it was required. They were not properly being planned. So that is another observation that this workforce should also be considered. It has been observed that in some cases, scheduled 4 p.m. was uh, mechan 4 p.m. was mechanically isolated in the morning, just as the same observation. Again, it has been observed in some work schedule absent manpower was also being scheduled. Yeah, this is again the feedback from the supervisor themselves that if a certain team member is absent, they should report it as absent because if the planner does not have uh, the access to the daily rota, then if he plans that workforce from planning point of view, he has planned 100% of work from them. So if a certain person or certain craft member is not available, his time will still be considered towards uh, spend time. 
resolve the situation is recommended that all panelist counselors have view only access to the attendance system. It is also recommended to have a better communication between the supervisors and schedulers regarding the available resources. Right. There are quite a few more observations, but this is how generally um, <clears throat> the rent time studies go. I just showed you one example. These are some of the common observations that you can uh, expect to be an outcome of a range time study. They're not necessarily related to range time, but they can be related to your overall maintenance regime. Because all these studies like range time, RCM, we normally perform them to optimize the maintenance regime. So there can be interlink observation or interlink recommendation from all of these studies. Assumptions that we normally uh, take into account while we're performing such databases is first of all, explanation for instruction might be that in some cases, discussions regarding work could have been classified as a meeting or instruction. This is one of the uh, assumption that we took because if you are performing a toolbox talk at site, we consider that as, as a free uh, job or a free task uh, toolbox or free task meeting, we consider that as, as range time. But if you're performing the same in your office for 30 minutes, um, I mean, before, without any work order with the team or without any work instruction with the team, then it will be considered as a meeting. Break time might have been overlapped with personal time. That is another small gap that can be present in such studies. Like uh, it is possible that it, somebody is taking personal time and he informed the observer that, no, no, I'm on my break time because my break time has been shuffled or something. So that is another uh, small gap that can be present in this kind of data capturing. In most cases, the work completion was identified with the work permit closure, although in rare incidences where the task performance as per the task list was completed, yet the crew was working, the work completion was as per the supervisor or as per the planner. If they told us or if they informed our team that the work is closed, we consider that as closed. Since it is practically impossible to shadow the crew member for the whole day, therefore any gaps of less than five minutes, they have been rounded off. As highlighted in lossy methodology, the quality of work performed is not covered in the scope of this project. Every organization is uh, unique. They have their own uh, norms. They have their own parameters through which their people work. However, the common practices, they stay the same. So, during the course of this project, a complete review of range time effective elements were performed. It has been observed that the company uh, with a very strong maintenance planning and execution procedure. However, isolated incidents you will find in every place, even with a good maintenance regime or a good maintenance team, you will find isolated incidences, people who try to find loophole in the system. Such cases can be omitted not to, to affect the range time data. But these cases, they are discussed individually, independently with the supervisors if they want to exclude certain cases from the observation. Although it would be an extensive process, but uh, with the recommendations made here, our effective range time can be uh, increased and non-productive time can be reduced drastically. There are some references that we took from Maintenance Excellence uh, Institute regarding the range time, how they categorize these range time in terms of year, in terms of, in terms of percentage, etc. And uh, there's another benchmark for the four ties that we explained earlier that the effective maintenance time or some other parameters, how we take the benchmark for those ones as per the top and second, third four ties, etc. Thank you very much. I'll quickly try to address as many questions as possible because I think we are almost running out of time. The first question I have pending is, uh, sorry, I closed the question that I already answered. Is there, if there are two departments involved in preventive maintenance, should we book man hours for both departments by closing the PMC? When we talk about interdepartment uh, work orders, for example, Let's take an example of a generator. Mechanical will be involved, electrical will be involved, instrument will be involved. You need to schedule all three of them. You cannot expect that it's a generator, so only electrical team hours will be booked or electrical team will be scheduled. And the other teams, they can just take uh, willy-nilly as per the availability. Because if something is not scheduled, this is how uh, the non-effective time will increase. So that's why, yes, if they are required, if their presence is required, 
they need to be scheduled and they need to be informed that they have to be present at the same time as the other team. Since uh, range time is generally 30% or less, would it help to optimize reduce as a cost of your fusion, but at the same time, they might be demotivated? See, I've already addressed this question. Uh, team, uh, mod, uh, team morale needs to be kept by ensuring that this range time study is to help them. When you tell a maintenance craft that end of the day, if we perform this study in a good manner, you will have easy access to the spare parts you need. You will have access to your tools that you need. You will have your proper break times. Everybody will be accounted to perform their task on time. He will be happy. He will never resist this. So the morale or demoralization, as you mentioned, that will not be a one of the factors because if proper cautions are taken to perform the study, the pros and cons are considered, then the team uh, will actually support these kind of activities. So range time in your project is 3137. What is the percentage we uh, can set we want if that is a problem already? Well, to be honest, uh, from oil and gas sectors, the highest value that we have observed is 42. But that was from an independent uh, small team, and it was a very, uh, what you can say, a restricted facility in which everything was uh, within the facility, everything was available. They did not have much links with the outside world, you can say. So the range time was quite high there because the check and balance was quite high there as well. But on the average, the value is around 30 to 34 percent. You're right. Work assignment is 14 percent. Uh, work assignment means uh, basically waiting for the work to be assigned. Uh, work assignment category actually means that the craft member himself is sitting there waiting for the supervisor or the scheduler to hand him the task to be performed. So that's what this work assignment is. And yes, this 14 percent is a huge value for work assignment. This is why we said in the beginning that this dense time actually helps the scheduling and the planning team uh, much more than it helps the maintenance team itself. What level repair works is uh, included in this time? Sometimes it takes months to perform repairs. See, when it takes months to perform repairs, it needs to be um, it needs to be evaluated why it is taking months to perform a certain repair. Whether we don't have a certain spare part available, whether the activity has not been uh, planned the way it should have been because again the maintenance itself what, what we normally refer to as mttr value even for major equipment does not exceed a few maximum it goes to 100 and uh, something hours that we have seen in the genetic reliability databases if it is more complicated than that even that is okay but the problem comes into effect when people are taking months waiting for something. That is the time that we are trying to remove from the uh, maintenance team's uh, scheduled time. It's not the repair time that we are trying to uh, modify. It is the time that we are waiting for something that we are trying to optimize. How do you suggest to monitor and update in real time uh, different times for the lapses, like waiting for materials, spares, working time, travel time? Wouldn't nothing all these time in real time would be gruesome. We don't see, uh, we don't observe them as a real time value. They have to be observed over a certain period of time and then the data is analyzed. You cannot be controlling these parameters in a real time value. It's not like a process value that we can uh, tune there and then. So this is like more of a recorded data that you used to benchmark your facility that, okay, where do I stand now? After that, we make some improvements. Then after a certain period of time, you reevaluate this uh, study, you reperform the study. So it's not a uh, runtime or a real-time data that you um, observe. Can you share some of the standards? I've already shared the benchmark references that I've just shown for maintenance excellence uh, situate here. How the PF affects the rents time, sir, I've already explained it in details, how the maintenance, whether it is planned, whether it is corrective, whether it is predictive, they are all being affected by the rents time. Rents time will only highlight different times in a work execution solution to minimize idle times highlighted as per the company on working. See, rents time will highlight it. I'll go back to that. <clears throat> 
See, when we talk about branch time, we are actually looking for the individual categories where the people are working, where the people are not working. So the productive and non-productive time activities, that is what range time observations are about. It is not about the company's working procedure. Yes, if the company's procedure says that this thing has to be must done as a part of the range time itself, we can add it in the range time because then the cost needs to be evaluated in a similar way. Then that means they are willing to take this additional cost towards maintenance activity for a certain reason. For example, if a company is working for very remote locations, it's not, uh, let's say, um, in a certain area or where the traveling time is exceeding a few hours every day, then work traveled has to be considered as a cost within the working hours. So in that case, as I said, uh, that essential work travel is a part of work time. So maybe these two categories can be merged together, but the other categories, they can still be uh, optimized. Okay, uh, those are all the questions I could see on the screen. Thank you very much, everyone. If there are any more further questions regarding this topic or any other webinars, feel free to get back to our team and we will get in touch with you. There are quite a few comments here that people are uh, requesting for the presentations. Generally, we don't uh, share the PPTs for these, but the recording of all our webinars are available on the Velocity channel. Our uh, business team uh, can give you a better guideline of how to approach that, but I believe we are running a training channel as well. Our training institute is running a channel where all these uh, webinars are available for your daily review. Thank you very much. And if uh, there is anything else, I'd like to close this presentation now. Thank you everyone for your time.